Welcome everyone to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase. The theme is Data as Code, the Future of Enterprise Data and Analytics. This is the season two, episode two of the ongoing series of covering the exciting startups in the AWS ecosystem around data analytics and cloud computing. I'm your host, John Furrier. Today we're joined by great guests here, three guests. Wen Pan, who's a Director of Product Management at Ahana, Satyam Krishna, Engineering Manager at Blinkit, and we have Ashke Agarwal, Senior Engineer at Blinkit as well. We're going to get into the relationship there. Uh, let's get into it. We're going to talk about how Blinkit's using the open data lake, data house with Presto on AWS. Gentlemen, thanks for, uh, for joining us. Thanks for having us. So uh, we're going to get into the deep dive on the open data lake, but I want to just quickly get your guys thoughts on what it is for the folks out there. Set the table. What is the open data lake house? Why it is important? What's in it for the customers? Why are we seeing uh, adoption around this? Because this is a, a big story. Sure. Yeah, the, the open data lake house is really being able to run a gamut of analytics, whether it be BI, SQL, machine learning, data science, on top of the data lake, which is based on you know, inexpensive, low cost, scalable uh, storage. Uh, and um, more importantly, it's also uh, on top of open formats. And this to the end customer really uh, offers a tremendous range of flexibility. They can run a bunch of use cases on the same storage and great price performance. You guys have any other thoughts on what's your reaction to the lake house? What, what is your experience with it? What's going on, Blinkit? No, I think for us also, uh, it has been uh, the primary driver of how as a company, we have shifted our uh, completely delivery model from us delivering in one day to someone who is delivering in 10 minutes, right? And a lot of this was made possible by having a, this kind of architecture in place, which helps us to be more open source, more, you know, where the tools are open source, we have an open table format, which helps us be very modular in nature, meaning we can pick solutions which works for the best, which works best for us, right? And that, that is the kind of architecture that we want to be in. Awesome. When, you know, we last time we chatted with Ahana, we had a great conversation around Presto data. The theme of this uh, episode is data as code, which is interesting because in all the conversations uh, in this episode, it's all around developers, which administrators are turning into developers. There's a developer vibe with data and, you know, we're, open source is software. Like now you got data kind of taking a similar trajectory as how software development was with code but the people running data is not, they're not developers, they're administrators, they're operators. Now they're turning into data ops. So it's kind of a similar vibe going on with, you know, branches and taking stuff out of and putting it back in and testing it. Data sets becoming much more stable, iterating on machine learning algorithms. This is a movement. What's your guys reaction before we get into the, into the relationships here with you guys, but what's your reaction to this data as code movement? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> I think the folks at Blinkit are doing a great job there. I mean, they have a pretty um, uh, compact uh, data engineering team and they have some pretty stringent SLAs uh, as well as on, in terms of uh, time to value and reliability. And uh, what that ultimately translates for them is not only flexibility, but reliability. So they've done some very fantastic work on a lot of automation, um, a lot of integration uh, with code and their data pipelines. And I'm sure they can give the details on, on that. Yeah, Satyam and Ashke, you guys um, are engineers, software, but this is a, becoming a whole nother paradigm where the, the frontline coding and or work or engin data engineering or is implementing the operations as well. It's kind of like DevOps for data. For sure, right? And I think uh, whenever you're working, even as a software engineer, the understanding of business is equally important you cannot be working on something and be away from business, right? And that's where, uh, like I mentioned earlier, when when we realize that we have to completely move our stack and start giving analytics at 10 minutes, right? Because uh, when you're delivering in 10 minutes, your leaders want to take decisions in near real time. That means you need to move with them. You need to move with business. And when you do that, the kind of flexibility these softwares give is what enables the businesses at the end of the day. Awesome. Um, this is really kind of like, is there going to be a book called Agile Data Warehouses? I don't think so. Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the Agile Cloud Data. This is cool. So let's get into what you guys do. What, what is Blinkit up to? What do you guys do? Can you take a minute to explain the company and your product? Uh, sure, um, I'll take that. So 
Uh, Blinkit is India's biggest 10 minute delivery platform. Uh, it pioneered the delivery model in the country with over 10 million Indians shopping on our platform, uh, ranging from everything grocery, staples, vegetables, emergency services, electronics, and much more. Right? Uh, it currently delivers over 200,000 orders every day and is in a hurry to bring the future of commerce to everyone in India. What's the relationship with Ahana and Blinkit, Wayne? What's the, what's the tie-in? Yeah, so Blinkit had a pretty um, well-formed uh, stack. Uh, they needed a little bit more uh, flexibility uh, and control. Uh, they thought a managed service was, was the way to go. And uh, here at Ahana, we, we provide a, a SaaS managed service for Presto. Um, so they, they engaged us and uh, they evaluated uh, our offering. Um, and more importantly, we're able to partner, you know, as, as an early stage startup, we really rely on very strong uh, partners with great use cases that are willing to collaborate. And uh, the folks at Blinkit have just been, have been really great in helping us push our product, develop our product. Um, and we've been very uh, happy about the value that we've been able to deliver to, to them as well. Okay, so let's unpack the open data lake house. What is it? Um, what's under the covers? Uh, let's get into it. Sure. So if I bring up, bring up a slide, um, like I said before, it's really a paradigm on being able to run a gamut of analytics on top of the, the open data lake. Um, so what does that mean? How did it come about? Uh, so on the left hand side of the slide, you know, we, we uh, are coming out of this world where for the last several decades, uh, the primary workhorse for, you know, SQL based processing and reporting and dashboarding use cases was really the, the data warehouse. Uh, and what we're seeing is a shift uh, due to the trends in, in inexpensive, scalable storage, cloud storage, uh, the proliferation of open formats to facilitate um, using this storage to, to get certain amounts of reliability and performance, um, and the adoption of frameworks that can operate on top of this cloud data lake. So while here at Ahana, we're primarily focused on, on SQL workloads and, and Presto, uh, this architecture really allows for other uh, types of uh, frameworks. And you see that the ML and AI side. And, and like to Satyam's point earlier, offers a, a great amount of flexibility modularity for many use cases uh, uh, in, in, in the cloud. Um, so, so really that's, that's really the lake house and, and people like it for the performance, the openness and the price performance. How's the open source, open side of it, playing I'm call open source, it's kind of open formats. What is the open source angle on this? Because there's a lot of different approaches. I'm hearing open formats. You know, you have data stores are a big part of seeing that. You got SQL, you mentioned SQL. There's a, a mishmash of opportunities. Is it all coexisting? Is it one tool to rule the world or is it interchangeable? What is the open source angle? There's multiple angles and I'll let um, definitely Satyam add to what I'm saying. Uh, I, this was definitely a big piece for, 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 for Blinkit. Um, so on one hand, there's, you have the open formats and what really the open formats enable is uh, multiple compute engines to work on that data. Uh, that's very huge because it's open, it's, you're not locked in. I think the other part of open that is important uh, and I think it was important to Blinkit was the governance around that. So in particular, Presto is governed uh, by the Linux Foundation. And so uh, as a, a customer of open source uh, technology, they want some assurances for things like how is it governed? Is the license going to change? So there's that aspect of openness that I think is, is, is very important. Yeah, what's the, Blinkit, what's the data strategy here with, uh, with, with, with Lakehouse and you guys? Why are you adopting? this type of so, uh, architecture. Adding to what, yeah, I think adding to what Wen said, right? Uh, when we are thinking in terms of all these open stacks, you have got these open table formats, everything which is deployed over cloud. Uh, the primary reason there is mod modularity. It's as simple as that, right? Uh, you can plug and play so many different kinds of table formats from one thing to another based on the use case that you're trying to serve so that you get the most value out of data, right? I, I'll give you a very simple example. So for us, um, we use, even we not even use one single table format. It's not that one thing solves for everything, right? We use both hoodie and iceberg to solve for different use cases. One is good for when you're working for a certain kind of data set. Icebergs work, works well when you're in the SQL kind of interface, right? Hoodie is still trying to reach there. It's going to go there very soon. So having the ability to plug and play different formats based on the use case helps you to grow faster, helps you to take decisions faster because you, now you're not stuck on one thing that they will have to implement it, right? So I think that's what 
uh, it is great about this kind of a data lake strategy, keeping yourself cost effective. Yeah, please. So the enablement is basically use case driven. You don't have to be re-architecting for use cases. You can simply plug and play based on what yes. you need for the use case. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can, and again, um, you can focus on your business use case. You can figure out what your business users need and not worry about these things because that's where Pesto kinds of com comes in, helps you uh, stitch that data together with multiple data formats, give you the performance that you need and it works out the best there. And that's something that you don't get with traditional warehouse these days, right? The kind of yeah. thing that we need, you don't get that. I, I do want to add this is uh, just to 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 riff on what Satyam said. I think it's it's pretty interesting. So you know, it really allowed them to take the best of breed of what he was seeing in the community, right? So in the case yeah. of table formats, you know, you've got you got Delta, you've got Hoodie, you got Iceberg, and they all have got their own roadmap, and it's kind of organic of how these different uh, communities uh, want to evolve, and I think that's great. Uh, uh, but you have these end consumers like like Blinkit who have different maybe use cases overlapping, and they're not forced to pick one. When you have an open architecture, they can kind of really put together best of breed. And as these projects evolve, uh, they can continue to monitor it and then make decisions and continue to remain agile based on the, the landscape and how it's evolving. So the agility is the key, a key point. Flexibility and agility and time yeah. to value in, with, your, with your data. Yeah. All right, when I got to get in and the, why the Presto is important here. Where does that fit in? Why is Presto important? Yeah, I mean, for me, it all comes down to the use cases and the needs and, and you know, reporting and dashboarding is not going to go away anytime soon. It's a very common use case. Uh, mo many of our customers like Blinkit uh, come to us uh, for that use case. Uh, the difference now is today people want to do that particular use case uh, on top of uh, the modern data lake, on top of scalable, inexpensive, low cost storage, right? In addition to, to that, there's a need for this kind of low latency interactive ability to kind of engage with the data. Uh, this is often arises when you need to do things in an ad hoc basis or you're in the developmental phase of building things up. So if that's kind of what your need is uh, and latency is important and getting your arms around the problem is very important, you have a certain SLA, I need to deliver something, uh, that puts some requirements in the technology. And Presto uh, is uh, a perfect for that I I ideal use case. It's ideal for that use case. It's uh, you know it's distributed, it's scalable, it's in memory, uh, and so it's able to really provide that. Um, I think the other benefit for for Presto and and why we're betting on Presto is uh, it works well on the data lakes, uh, but you have to think about how are these organizations maturing with this technology. So it's not necessarily an all or nothing. You have organizations that have maybe the data lake and it's augmented with other analytical data stores like, like Snowflake or Redshift. So Presto also uh, a core aspect is its ability to federate or connect and query across different uh, data sources. Uh, so this can be a, a permanent thing. This could also be a transitionary thing. We have some customers that are, are, are moving and slowly kind of shifting their data portfolio from maybe you know all data warehousing to 80% data lake, but it gives that optionality. It gives that ability to uh, transition over a time frame, uh, but for all those reasons, the the the, the latency, the scalability, the federation, uh, it, you know, is is why Presto for this particular use and you, case. And you can connect with other databases. It can be purpose built database. It can be whatever, right? Sure. Yes. Yes. Uh, Presto has a very pluggable architecture. Okay. Here's the question for the Blinket team: Why did you choose Presto, and what led you to Ahana? So, so like I'll take this better. Like over this, like uh, oh. What Presto sits well in the in this architecture is is how it is designed. Like basically, Presto decouples your storage with uh, with your compute. So basically, like people can people can use any storage, and Presto just works as a query engine for them. So basically, like uh, it has a concept of connectors where you can connect with with a real time databases like Pino or a Druid, along with your warehouses like Redshift along with a data lake that's like based on Huri or the iceberg. So it's like a very, uh, very landscape that you can use with the Presto. And the consumers like the analytics uh, cannot, doesn't need to learn the SQL or different paradigms of the querying for different sources. They just need to learn a single source and like they get a single place to consume from. They they get a single, uh, desk, single consumer and their single, uh, destination to write on also. So kind of uh, it 
it homo it's it's a homo homologous architecture like which allows you to put a central security like which presto integrates with like it's also based on open open architecture that's apache range and it has also certain uh, innovative features like that you can see based on caching which reduces a lot of the cost and since you have further decoupled your storage with compute you can further reduce the cost because now the biggest part of the of our traditional warehouse is a storage and the cost goes massively upwards with your uh, with the amount of data that you add in like basically each time that you add more data you require more storage and warehouses ask you to write the data in in their own format over here since we have decoupled that the storage cost has gone down like it's it's literally that your cost that you are writing and you just pay for the compute and you can you can you can scale in scale out based on your requirements if you have high traffic you scale out if you have low traffic you scale in so all those things. so huge cost savings yeah yeah cost effectiveness for sure yeah cost yeah. effectiveness and you get a very good price value out of it like for each uh, for each each query you get a uh, you can estimate what's the cost for you based on that tracking and all those things I mean, if you think about the old, the classic iceberg and what's under the water, you don't know what's the hidden yeah. costs. You think about the tooling, right? And also the time it takes to do stuff. So if you have flexibility on choice, when we were kind of riffing on this last time we chatted with you guys and you brought it up earlier around, you can have the open formats to have different use cases and different tools or different platforms to work on it. Redshift, you can use, use Redshift here, use something over there. You don't have to get locked in. Locking yeah, absolutely. is a huge problem. How do you guys see that? Because it sounds like here, there's not a lot of lock-in. You got the open formats uh, and you got choice. Yeah, so so huh. you get both of the best best of the both worlds. Like you get the, with Ahana or with the Presto, you get the best of the both worlds. Like since it's cloud native, you can, you can, you can easily deploy your clusters very easily within like five minutes, like your cluster is up, you can, start working on it. You can deploy multiple clusters for multiple teams. Uh, you can, you get also flexibility of adding new connectors uh, since it's open and you, and further, like it's also much more secure since it's based on cloud native. So basically like you can control your uh, security endpoints very well. So all those things comes in together with this uh, architecture. So, so you can definitely go more on the lake house architecture than warehousing. Uh, when you want to deliver data value faster and basically like you get the much more high value out of your data in a shorter time period. So Satyam, it sounds like the old warehousing was like the application person, not a lot of usage, old, a lot of latency, okay, here and there, but now you got more speed to deploy clusters, scale up, scale down. Yeah. Application developers are, is everybody, it's not one person, it's not one group, it's whenever you want. So you got speed, you got more diversity in the data opportunities, and you're coding. Yeah, I think data warehouses are a way to start for every organization who is getting into data. I don't think um, data warehousing is not, still a solution and will, will be a solution for a lot of teams which are still getting into data. But as soon as you start scaling, as you start seeing the cost going up, as you start seeing the number of use cases adding up, having an open format definitely helps. So I would say that's where um, we are also heading into and that's that's how our journey as well started with Presto as well. That why we even thought about Ahana, right? So <laughs> um, like you mentioned, uh, one of the things that happened was as we were moving to the lake house um, and the open table format, I think Ahana is one of the uh, first ones in the market to have uh, Hoodie as a first class citizen completely supported with all the things um, which are which were not even present at the time of uh, even with Presto, right? So we see Ahana working behind the scenes, improving even some of the things already over the open source ecosystem, and that's where uh, we get the most value out of Ahana as well. This is the convergence of open source <laughs> magic and commercialization. When because yeah. you think about yeah. you know data as code reminds me I hear data warehouse it's not going to go away and but you got cloud scale or scale uh, it reminds me of the old oh yeah I have a data center well uh, <laughs> it comes the cloud so like it doesn't really kill the data center although Amazon yeah. would say that you know the data center is going to be eliminated no you just use it for whatever you need it for you use it for specific use cases but everyone all the action goes to the cloud for scale 
the same things happen with data and look at the open source community. It's kind yeah. of coming together. Data as code is coming together. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I do want to, I, again, connect another dot in terms of cost and that, and you know, we've been talking a little bit about price performance, but there's an implicit cost. And I think this was also very important to Blinkit and also why we, we offering a managed service. So the uh, one piece of it, is, and it really re revolves around the people. Right. So outside of the technology, the performance, um, op uh, one thing that, you know, Akshay brought up and I, you know, it's a very another important piece that I should have highlighted a little bit more is, you know, Presto exposes uh, the ability to interact your data in, in a very um, a way, a, a widely adopted way, which is basically ANSI SQL. So the ability for your practitioners to uh, use this technology is huge. That's that's just regular Presto in terms of a managed service. Uh, uh, you know, the guys at Blinkit are a, a great high performing team, but they want, they have to be very efficient with their uh, time and what they manage. And uh, what we're trying to do is provide leverage for them. So take a lot of the heavy lifting away, but at the same time, figuring out the right things to expose so that they have that same flexibility. And that's been kind of the balancing point that we've been trying to balance uh, at Ahana. Uh, but that goes back to cost. How do I total cost of ownership. And that not doesn't include just the actual querying processing time, but the ability for the organization to go ahead and absorb this solution. And what does it cost in terms of the people involved? Yeah, great conversation. I mean, this brings up the question of, you know, back in the data center to cloud days, you had the concept of an SRE, which is now popular site reliability engineer. One person does all the clusters and manages all yes. the scale. Is the yep. data engineer the new SRE for data? I mean, do, do are we seeing a similar trajectory? Just want to get your reaction. What do you guys think? Yeah, so I, I would say like definitely like it's it's it depends on the like teams and the sizes of that. Uh, we are a high performing team, so each org organization take takes bets on the pieces of the architecture, like where they want to invest in. And and it comes out with the value of the engineer's time and basically like uh, how much they can invest in, how much they need to configure the architecture and how much time it will take to time to market. So basically like uh, this, this is what I would also highlight as an engineer. Like I found like Ahana, like the I would say like as a presto uh, in a cloud native environment, Oh, I think so there's no one in the market that seamlessly scales and then scales out. And further, like with a team of us, like considering like I would say like a team size of like three to four engineers managing a cluster day in and day out, uh, conferring, uh, like tuning and all those things takes a lot of time. And yeah. Anna came in and takes, takes it off our plate and they, the hands in a solution which which works out of box. So that's where like uh, this comes in like, and it's also based on open yeah. source community. So the time of the engineer's my, time is so valuable. Yeah. You know, my, my yeah, take is, I, I think, I'm sorry, uh, my, my take on it really in terms of the, the data engineering being the yeah, SRE, I think I think that can work. It kind of depends on on the actual, uh, you know, person and, and uh, you know, we definitely try to make the, the process um, uh, as as easy as possible. Uh, I think in, in Blinkit's case, you guys are you know they're they're data platform owners, uh, but they definitely are aware of the pipelines. Yeah. So they 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 have very intimate knowledge of what the data engineers uh, 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 do. Uh, but I think they in their case, you guys you're managing a ton of systems. So it's not just even Presto. Yeah. They have a, a ton of systems, um, and you know, surfacing that interface so they can cater to all the data engineers across their data systems. Yeah. I think is the is, is the big need for 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 them. I, I know you guys want you want to chime in. I mean. We, we've I've, yeah, you know, I've seen the architecture and, and things like yes, that. I think you guys yes. are doing an amazing job there. So, and to adding to John's point, right? Like I genuinely think what like DevOps is to the tech team, I think uh, what is data engineer or the data teams are to the data organization, right? Like they play a very similar role that you have to act as a guardrail to ensure that uh, everyone has access to the data. So the democratization and everything is there, but that has to also come with security, right? And when you do that, there are, yeah. for us, there are a lot of points where someone can interact with data. We have, um, and again, there's a mixed batch of open source tools that works well as well. And there are some paid tools as well. So yeah. for us, like for visualization, we use read ash for our ad hoc analysis and we use Tableau as well. Whenever we want to give a very concise reporting, um, we have Jupyter Hub notebooks in place and we have EMRs as well. So we always have a mixed batch of things where 
uh, people can interact with data and most of our time is spent in acting as that guardrail to ensure that everyone should have access to data but it shouldn't be exploited right and i think that's where we spend most of our time in yeah and i think the time is valuable but the, the, your point about the democratization aspect of it there seems to be more, a bigger step function value that you're enabling and these we talked about the 10x engineer it's more like 50x right if you get it done <laughs> right the enablement downstream at the scale that we're seeing with this new trend is significant. It's not just, oh yeah, visualization and get some data quicker. There's actually real advantages on a multiple with that engineering. So, and we saw that that with DevOps, right? It's like you do this right and then magic happens on, on the edges. So yeah, it's interesting. You guys, congratulations, great environment. Thanks for sharing the insight, uh, Blinkit. Went great to see it, Ahan again uh, with Presto. Congratulations, open source meets Data engineering, thanks so much. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks this for is having season me. two, episode two of our ongoing series. This one is Data as Code. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.